Welcome back to the last installment of the making of my Ikea gown. This is where we left off last time with the bodice complete. Next is for the skirts to be assembled before attaching. I am sewing the two skirt pieces with a French seam. So you start with the wrong side sewn together, then you press it flat, then you trim the seam allowance, and then you sew the right sides together. Once this is pressed flat, you have a nicely finished seam. Next, I'm going to hem the front edges of the skirt. So this is not the bottom hem, but the edges that will be showing on the front where the skirts open up. And I'm doing this by folding the edges over twice and then sewing that in place. And then you know how sometimes sewing machines have minds of their own. This horror happened. The only way I know how to fix something like that is to just keep turning the two knobs on my machine that I don't know what they are to different numbers and trying it out and hoping that it fixes itself. Now we're back to the bodice. I have turned the edges up so that there will be a finished edge once the skirt is attached. I then marked and measured the length that the skirt will need to be pleated to in order to stop at the, where I wanted it to and this came out to 28 inches. Now with that measurement, we can start pleating. Now that I've given you a fair warning, this is my foolproof method to figure out how to pleat. You just need your starting and ending lengths and then you pick whatever pleat width that you want. I picked half an inch. These equations will give you then the length of fabric you need to use in each one half inch pleat. Mine rounds out to 1.75 inches. Using those calculated lengths, on my final piece of fabric, I mark the center, and then I mark every 1.75 inches. And yes, I use a Sharpie to do that because you won't see this fabric. Then from every 1.75 inch mark I made, I go back a half an inch and make another mark. So each pleat will have a start, end, and then a one half inch mark from the end of the pleat. And these marks will show you exactly where to fold your fabric to make perfect equal pleats. And to get those two values, you just use the equations that I just showed you. And even though it takes longer, always make sure to do two rows of pins for pleats. It holds them much straighter and nicer when you are sewing them. And it makes it so I don't have to base them in place, which would just take extra time. I did decide a little bit later that I wanted more than 28 inches of the skirt to go around. I wanted it to go farther in front, so I did end up taking out these last pleats I'm putting in now. Then you just repeat the pleating on the other side in the same exact way, but just turn the other direction and you just keep pleating until your knees are dying because you're kneeling on the floor because you didn't think that you could do this on a table, which you absolutely can. So I do not recommend kneeling because this process takes a very long time. Now that the pleating is done, the skirt has to be attached to the bodice. I pondered attaching the skirt using a machine and pinning the right sides together and just machine sewing along that, but I decided I wanted more control than that. I didn't want to risk messing up all those pleats I worked so hard for, so I pinned the wrong side of the bodice to the right side of the skirt first. The next step in the American Duchess book is to slit the back middle. I thought this was to help you curve the pleats around the point, but really you should go straight across the point and you could cut the skirt later if it helps you not do the mistake that I made, which I have to fix later. Um, and I'll show you where I'm fixing that. And the split is really just to fold down the fabric so that it's not so bulky and that point can lie flatter. I then did a brief try on without any stays on and it looks super funny with the pleats pinned over that bum pad, but it sort of gives you an idea what it'll look like. Now for the actual hand sewing part. I am using doubled up thread to do an applique stitch to attach the bodice to the skirt. This seam will take a lot of stress um, because it has to hold up the skirt. So I tried to do as many stitches per inch as my fingers would allow. 
This fabric does not like to be hand sewn, this um, duvet fabric, so it was really hard on my fingers. Once this monstrosity of a task was done, here's what it looks like on one half after I finished the first half. You can barely see the stitches from the front, which is what we're looking for. And you can see that like warped point that is the problem that I caused by trying to like curve the pleats around. And then on the back, you can see my stitches are much more visible and much longer than they are. They're almost like little prick stitches on the front. Hopefully you will use this as a lesson that you need to protect your fingers if you're going to be hand sewing like this. You're gonna do Ouch. a lot of hand sewing. You need a thimble. You need it to protect your fingers. That's a small clip from Abby Cox's video on how to use thimbles correctly. I'll link that above. And the fruits of my labor of doing all that is that I get to take out all of the pins, which is just so satisfying. This is where you can split the skirt if you haven't already, and then you just iron it flat so that the bolt goes where the skirt should puff out and not where it should be flat, where those bones are down the back bodice. Now it's everyone's favorite time, time for sleeves or sleeve evils or sleevels, if you will. Because I'm too lazy to actually count the squares in the pattern in the American Duchess book, what I'm starting with is some important widths on my hand, like the total length, I'll draw a line, and then around where my elbow is, I'll get that length, and then I'll also get around like the largest part of my arm as guidelines. And then from there, I will start just free handing in the curves of the top of the arm, and also the curves down the seam that will run along my arm. And this is not done very exact, and I just try to tell myself that the higher the arm's eye is, the part that goes under your arm, actually the more movement your sleeves will have. So you try not to make it too exaggerated of a dip, or else you might not as have much mobility as you want. Instead of being a two-piece sleeve, this is a split sleeve. So it's just one piece and has this little split that you cut in your pattern and that is a second seam that gets sewed up, but it only is like basically past the elbow. And of course it's very important to do a mock-up first because you really have no idea if this is going to fit or not. Um, and that's showing the two seams that you're gonna sew up to make the completed sleeve. And then I always like to fit it on the actual bodice. And I did make a couple of adjustments and draw it a new pattern piece, um, but it was actually pretty painless to basically draft this myself. And even though I had a relatively easy time of it, I, um, I really, really did not want to make the sleeves. So about a week later, I go to cut out my sleeve pattern piece, and I'm using about the last fabric that I have. If you remember from two videos ago, I only had this one chunk left to cut out a sleeve with, and I sewed it up, and I put it on, and it was kind of tight, and I couldn't really figure out why. Um, then I remembered that I was using that pattern that I'm showing now and that I had made adjustments and cut out a second pattern and I totally cut out the wrong piece because I didn't label these so label your pattern pieces folks and um, hmm, I was almost out of fabric so I had to resort to using the pillowcases thank god I have them or else I would have had to piece the sleeves together I think and to make it work. So I did just iron out the pillowcases and then I was able to have enough fabric to cut out my two sleeves. Now I did sew up the lining and the outer fabric separately, unlike the American Duchess book that has you sew them together in one seam. So in order to keep them aligned correctly, I just threw in a couple of pins um, around the top of the arm where it's going to be stitched into the bodice just to hold them together. 
In this process, I'm constantly putting the sleeve on my arm to remember which one goes on which side because I just, I have so much fear about sewing the wrong sleeve into the wrong arm. And I didn't, so all of my checking worked. Um, I'm going to start sewing these sleeves in by pinning together the sleeve and the arm's eye where the piece going the shoulder piece is not so around the bottom half it's getting pinned in and the top is being left free and this is being pinned with the right sides together so that the seam allowance is going to be on the inside of the bodice that seems like an obvious thing to say but um, it will be different for the top half of the sleeve which will be coming next so i just make sure when i'm doing these that i put the sleeve seam where i want it to sit on the front i use that seam going across the front of the arm as my sort of marker of where to put that in the arm side to make sure that each sleeve is set in the same. Then I just sew that up. I'm again leaving that top part non-sewn, which we didn't pin earlier. I don't have any footage of this, but then you pin the wrong sides together of the top half. And a lot of times this is fit on the actual person, um, but since I'm doing this on my own, I couldn't do that. And the seam will be facing out. So the seam allowance will not be on the inside of the garment, but on the outside. And that will be covered up by the shoulder strap that we haven't attached yet. Now that the sleeves are set in, it's really important that I tried this on over the actual undergarments to see how it was fitting because I don't want to do any seam finishing if I'm going to be ending up changing these seams because that's just like triple the work of undoing. So I was actually happy and only had to set these sleeves in one time, which I think is actually a first for my projects that I just had a I did cut out the wrong sleeve, but I did not sew it in before I realized it was wrong. I did think they were too pointy though, and I pressed, and they had like a little like point where that second split seam was, so I just ended up folding that in a bit and then doing like a, a running stitch to sort of smooth out that curve and not make it like a angular point on the elbow, which looked a little bit funny. going to talk about seam finishes um but i started with fixing this issue here how i sort of curved the pleats towards the left towards the split bump pad when they should really be sitting really perpendic not perpendicular but parallel with the with the center back so i just undid that and restitched it in and then for the raw edge of the skirt i just did a zigzag stitch down it which is what i'm doing now traditionally those were left raw in actual garments but it made me feel better to just run a zigzag stitch on the end now for these seams in the bodice i'm going to be using flat felling and that entails trimming one side of the seam and then you fold over and then basically use sort of a whip stitch down the seam and this only catches the lining fabric so none of this shows to the front i find it especially important to make sure that you leave enough seam allowance because if you don't it becomes really hard to get this folded edge over all the way and to sit right sometimes even when i pin it it wants to unfold and i just sort of use my needle to tuck it back under and then you just sew away and it's pretty easy and pretty quick and i really enjoy hand felling these especially with just some netflix on in the background and it goes a lot faster than you would think it would <laughs> 
Next, I have to finish up all the edges of the bodice that aren't seamed and I just folded it over twice and ironed that in place and I also pinned it in place. And this will also just go through the lining and not show through to the front, so you have to be really careful. And I know you're probably screaming, I'm screaming in my head watching this, but I should have been using a thimble, I should have been using a much thinner needle, this needle was like super tarnished by now and I was having such a hard time pushing it through the fabric, I, it, it was, I was making it basically as hard as possible for myself and <laughs> going so, so, so slow, but I did eventually go get out a fresh needle that was much thinner and slid through the fabric so much better than this one, this clunky one. Back to that shoulder strip, I folded in the edges and pinned that over where all of the seams were. So we had seams facing up where the band attached to the front and the back bodice and then along the top of the arm. So all of those seams got folded down towards the band. And this gets attached using a spaced back stitch through all the layers. And sometimes you prick your finger and get blood on your garment in a super obvious place and just really are so happy about it. But here is the inside of the bodice with all of the hand finishing done. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I think it looks really neat and tidy and I love the look of those spaced back stitches that I'm showing now. Very, very historical looking to me. And of course, you gotta try it on again and see how it's looking. And the back is looking pretty wrinkly, but I figured out it's because I had the front pulled too tight and it was just creating those wrinkles on the back. But if I loosen it up a bit on the front where I have it pinned in place, those wrinkles go away. And what I'm doing now is pinning up the edges of the skirt. I noticed that the angle that the skirt falls was too far out and I wanted it to fall straight down and to fix that I just sort of pinned up the skirt a little bit um, and added the excess underneath and then just ran another little applique stitch along that new place where I'm attaching the skirt to the bodice. The last thing we have left that's unfinished on the bodice is the sleeves. And you'll notice that um, the shoulders kind of want to fall down, I think that's my bad. But for the sleeves, I just folded the edges inward and pinned those in place and made sure that both sleeves were exactly the same length and fell right where I wanted them to in sort of a three quarters. Now to hem on my own, um, this is my newest technique to film it, pin it up at a random spot and film it. That first one was too short. This was the second round. I like that a lot better. And then once I decided that length, I could try on the full outfit and I want the hem of the overdress to be a bit longer than the under petticoat. So I did that one second and was pretty happy with my first go at pinning. I want to make sure you can see my beautiful American Duchess shoes under there, so don't want to hide those too much. Now for a 1780s Italian gown, these are relatively simply trimmed. A lot of the earlier gowns from earlier decades have much, much more trim, but I decided to keep it really simple and just used a white lace gathered along the top and the sleeves. What I'm doing here is figuring out the length that I'll need to gather lace to for along the top of the bodice using a bias tape, which is what I will sew the lace to first, and then I will sew that whole trim onto the gown. So I got three times the length of the top of my bodice of lace cut out. I decided I wanted a three to one gathering ratio. And then I just did a running stitch through the bottom section of all of that lace. And then I gathered it down to match the bias tape, pinned it on with a million hundred thousand pins and it was so difficult. And then attempted to stitch it on using a machine, even though it was a giant mess and like the, the lace kept getting off the bias tape. And then I would have to like pick up the needle, go back a little bit and try to scrunch them together. And it was okay with me if they weren't 100% of the time overlapping. I just wanted to get those 
gathers in pretty pretty firmly before I moved to putting them in the dress and and this did work it took a long time but in the end you get this final finish trim that's got the lace already pre-gathered on the bias trim which makes it a breeze to just whip into the the bodice so I just pinned it on made sure that I had enough and I had exactly enough that when they overlapped there was a little bit of excess and then I just did a simple whip stitch along the bottom and then I did a pretty spaced out back stitch along the top to make sure that there wasn't a gap showing the edge of the lace in the front of the bodice. And then I was so excited that I had to try it on again and I videotaped not even showing the freaking trim that I just put on, which is the reason why I'm videotaping. Gotta love that. But then I just repeated that process for the sleeve trim. And lastly, the part of the project I always put off until the very end, hemming. I just did a pretty simple, I don't even know if this is, is this a whip stitch? I don't, but I'm just hemming by placing a stitch on every strip of the stripe, which makes it really easy to get even stitches. And along the front, I actually did two stitches for every stripe. And then on the back half, I did one because I was getting very lazy. And it turns out that the final product looks pretty much identical. That's the two stitches per stripe for the front, looking very nice and neat. And then the back is just one stitch per stripe, which honestly looks identical, so. The last touch is that these skirts can be worn in two ways. You can tie them up or leave them down, and that just requires adding in these ties. The American Duchess book pattern shows you where to put that tie um, on the bottom skirt panel, and then you just stitch those in, and when tied up, they look a little bit like this. I attach those ties by first finishing off the edges, and then just sewing it to the bodice. And I wanted to make sure that these could hold up to quite a bit of tension because it is the only thing holding the skirt up when you wear it that way, so I did quite a lot of stitches. With that, the dress is done. I threw on some other accessories that I made really quick and the bonnet from my Outlander project that I stitched a ribbon to and, and it was complete. I'm super happy with how this turned out. I, I absolutely love this dress and I wish that I had any reason to wear it whatsoever other than just in my apartment by myself. Just because I didn't mention it, this dress is put on by pinning the front down and I just used little metal tipped pins to put it on and you pin them into your stays and try to avoid stabbing yourself. I just really love how this gown looks from the front and from the back and I think the ruffles are such a nice touch and my little bow that I made for the front center. And here is what the skirts look like when they're tied up. It just gives a totally different look to the outfit. Um, and it shows off the stripy petticoat more. I really love the contrasting patterns. I feel like stripes and floral combination is very late 18th century to me. I know it would also look really good maybe if I made like a burgundy petticoat, but I love this final product using only Ikea duvet fabric. So thank you for joining me on this Ikea gown journey and see you next time.